Hello and welcome to a sort of combo buyer's guide, user guide, a bit of history, all kind of mixed in. And it's devoted to the humble vinyl inner sleeve. This video is split into two parts. This is part one, and I will tell you about part two at the end of this video, and I will explain why there has to be. A part two. So let's get cracking. This is a wholly imperfect and rather brief history of the inner sleeve. And I ask for your help from you if you have any supporting books or documents to help fill in some of the gaps that I'm sure will appear in this rather rushed history. Rushed because I haven't got so much time to do this thing. I could have spent months, really, I could have spent months writing the history <laughs> of the inner sleeve. Crazy, I know, but true. The vinyl LP itself was launched around what? 1948, I think it was. And from what I can tell, those LPs were pushed into customers' hot and sweaty hands, naked, I suppose you would say. That is, you would have a burr vinyl disc, and then that was shoved into an outer heavy cardboard sleeve, and that's how it was sold. Now, this is the kind of thing I mean. This is, as you can see, the Mills Brothers, four boys and a guitar. And this particular one was issued, I think, in 1954 on the Brunswick label. I think this was published in the UK under Brunswick. And as you can see, that was it. No inner sleeve. This is the kind of thing that would have been sold to the public before the inner sleeve was a thing. Now, paper sleeves were used to protect earlier 78s, sure. But originally, as I say, Record labels thought that hard cardboard outer sleeves would be sufficient protective covering for vinyl records. What they didn't realize was that the relatively fragile, compared to 78s anyway, the rather fragile vinyl record was busy being scraped and scratched inside this heavy outer cardboard sleeve. So it took a few years for record companies to realize that the relatively fragile vinyl record required a tad more protection. Now, according to my rather hurried research, it was a chap named Robert D. Allison who first invented the inner sleeve. He was the general manager of the Hartford, Connecticut branch of the US Envelope Company, apparently. Now, the use of paper provided a sense of structure to the inner sleeve. So here is an example of one of the most basic of paper sleeves. In this case, this one has rounded corners, which can actually help fit because sometimes there's not a great deal of room inside some of the early outer sleeves. They can be a bit tight fitting. So sometimes these rounded edges did help a little bit in terms of putting these things actually inside. However, as I say, rather bland and rather plain. And here's another example. And in this particular case, we have a little bit of brand recognition because we have an inner sleeve with the MCA logo all over it. But it's just a basic paper inner. Now you saw the branding, the MCA branding on one of those paper inners. And that was a clue as to what was about to happen because the main reason paper was used was because it was ideal for marketing purposes. Labels realized that the space it provided could be used to advertise their words, to promote the labels of the vinyl releases, or even to promote good care of the vinyl record itself. Sometimes they promoted specific vinyl care products from the label, or even styli in the process. The type and quality of inner sleeves at this time vary tremendously. Some were presented as basic paper-only die-cut designs. Others used a paper sleeve, but with a soft plastic lining. Now, from what I can tell from my own limited research, the addition of a soft plastic lining inside a paper inner sleeve first occurred in 1957 or 19. 
58. And that appears to have been invented by three people at a UK outfit called Darton Manufacturing Co. Limited. And here's one example of a paper inner sleeve with a plastic soft poly liner inside, as you can see on the shiny bit in the middle there. Now, as you might imagine, with the extended history of the vinyl record and the inner sleeve, and the wealth of technologies and companies involved, there's always variations on a theme. And on this particular 10 inch, which is a bit of a compilation, inside here is a sort of paper which is very soft, almost but not quite rice papery, kinda. It's very soft on the inside and it appears to be very kind to the vinyl inside. Let me quickly show you the inner sleeve. And here it is, not particularly exciting to look at, I know, and it seems to be made in England, you can just see at the bottom there. And the difference with this is, if I feel around inside, and I can feel on my fingers, there's, it's not really a waxy feel. It kind of is, it kind of feels very smooth in there. Well, no, maybe not waxy, but a particularly fine paper, one that has no obvious abrasive characteristics, and is very different indeed from the normal cheap paper inner. So yes, there are all kinds of exceptions and variations when you're talking about inner sleeves. So these sorts of exceptional variations, well, that's something to bear in mind when you're looking at a video like this. The soft plastic lining style was not the only variation, of course. For example, there were inner sleeves that featured a sort of soft waxy coating on the inside of the paper sleeve itself and that protected the record very well and that's a design you didn't often see too often back in the day and i don't really see them at all now unless you know difference of course but i'd like to see that style that waxy inner return although i wonder if the production process is too expensive now right that's enough history let's look at the good and bad in terms of inner sleeves. The bad boy of the inner sleeve world is the basic paper inner sleeve. Let me tell you a quick story, a brief tangent if you will. Now I haven't always been a hi-fi journalist. When I started out in the 80s I was an aviation journalist and during that time I also started to write for plastic model making magazines. These are the sort of airfix kits, a bit like this. I've still got a collection of these things. I must get back into these one day. Anyway, I was into building plastic aircraft models, these perfect kind of things. And because I strived for realism, as I say, I like to take off the shelf kits and modify them, enhancing or even creating new details. Hence, I used to have quite a complex workbench full of different tools. And one of those tools was a range of sandpaper and glass paper, which was used to remove heavy handed detailing or stubborn seams, or some such. Now when I was using these different graded papers on the plastic kits, the finer the grain, the smoother the finish, as earlier scratches or imperfections were slowly removed. One of those tools on offer was paper. Yep, basic paper. Why? Well, because cheap paper is an abrasive. A very fine abrasive, sure, but an abrasive nevertheless. To give you a more common example, you can use basic paper to clean your car's windscreen. No chemicals, just paper. It works a treat. Yes, paper has some absorbency, which does help, of course, when you're talking about windscreens. However, the paper itself has fine abrasive qualities during cleaning and it removes and scrapes dirt away from your windscreen. Give it a go, tell me what you think. So tell me this, if paper is in fact a mild abrasive, why on earth would you want to cover your vinyl with it?
Because every time you remove your vinyl and then you push it back in, you are sanding your vinyl record every single time. Do that over and over and you will abrade the actual vinyl itself, adding micro scratches to the surface, creating fine PVC dust, which then falls into the grooves, which then adds surface noise and pops and crackles. And I'll tell you something else, paper sleeves do absolutely nothing to reduce static. In fact, they tend to create static. The movement of the record in and out of the paper inner builds static. It attracts dust. Dust lands on the record. That in itself adds to the sandpaper effect, the abrasive nature. Because the paper rubs against the dust, it then pushes the dust into the vinyl, you get bigger scratches, you get more surface noise, and so on and so on. So, if you buy a vinyl record, old or new, because there are plenty of new records with pure paper inners these days, I get them all of the time, replace them. Replace them with, well, we'll get to that. But don't have your records in contact with paper inners. Now, back to my MCA inner, a basic paper inner. I said replace the paper inners for a better quality inner sleeve, but I didn't say bin it. In the old days, I used to actually bin old paper inners, but I've since changed my mind. In fact, it didn't take long for me to change my mind. So I don't use the old inner sleeve, but I do keep it, whether it be paper only or otherwise, actually. Patterned inner sleeves like this, or inner sleeves where there are old ads all over the place, or even white inner sleeves, which may have historical serial numbers on them, that kind of thing. They add a certain intrinsic, if not monetary, value. Now, you might disagree, but I firmly believe if you destroy the original inner sleeve, you actually devalue the vinyl record as an original package in every way. So, I store the original inner next to the new inner replacement. So, I will either store the original paper inner in the outer sleeve, or I will tuck it into the plastic cover, hidden away at the rear. Something else I'm not keen on are the plastic only inner sleeves. These are kind to records, but they have zero structural integrity. They're fine if you decide to have these inner sleeves with the opening parallel to the outer sleeves, but in that way, you're inviting dust onto the record. That seems to be the only way that I can personally use these inner sleeves. And that's not really good enough, I don't feel anyway. So if I do not recommend those inner sleeves, what do I recommend? Well, if you're on a budget, I recommend basic paper inner sleeves coated on the inside with a soft poly plastic, a bit like this. These sort of low-cost sleeves provide a dual benefit of structural integrity, so the inner sleeve keeps its shape during use, but it's also kind to your vinyl. Now, there are different inners of this type from different suppliers. Some you will see branded, some will be slightly different from one another, but they're all basically doing the same job. In my experience, basic budget sleeves of this type will do fine. I've never had a problem with them. One tip, if you buy a second-hand record and it arrives with a sleeve like this, many people think, great, I'm sorted. But no, no, you're not. I would advise replacing it with a brand new one. The old one may possibly be worn inside or dust may have become embedded in the sleeve itself on the inside over the years. After all, you don't know where this thing has been. You don't know who had it. You don't know how it was stored or not. If it has not been stored carefully, then who knows? Dust might have become embedded inside the sleeve itself. The other significant inner sleeve style is the one sold by Mobile Fidelity. Now, I've seen basic polylined inner sleeves priced around, oh, I don't know, they vary so much. Well, let's say £20 for 50. Now, prices do vary, as I say, 
this kind of price is not too unusual. Now, if you buy 50 mobile fidelity inner sleeves in a, in a little package, you often pay double that amount for the pack of 50. So these are rather high-end inner sleeves. Now, mobile fidelity sleeves are built of three layers using two layers of soft polytype plastic and a paper filler in between, in the sandwich as it were. The paper itself, well, that feels rather soft and non-abrasive. Some people have called this layer rice paper, but no, it isn't rice paper at all. But it is a rather nice soft paper they use. I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest with you. Maybe you know differently. The idea is that when you remove and insert your record in these sleeves, there is no static buildup, so dust is not attracted to the vinyl surface. So your record stays cleaner for longer. Also, the poly layers are transparent, so you can clearly see the record within, which can be useful in itself. Downsides, well, there is the price, of course, plus the structural integrity is fine, but it's not the best. Also, the front, sometimes I've seen, can crinkle, so I'm imagining bits of the sleeve lifting, allowing gaps for dust access, but that might be purely my imagination, because I have no proof on that at all. It's just a little worry, I suppose. It's me. Also, the corners of the sleeve tend to crumple almost too quickly because of the lack of that integrity. Even so, despite my picky comments, and that's all they are, picky comments, these are excellent inner sleeves, and I've never had an issue with them. Now, I do know some people who have had issues with these sleeves. But you know what? I'm going to talk about that next week. So, for now, how do I conclude this video? Well, avoid paper inner sleeves, but keep original paper inners as artifacts and store them appropriately. Ignore soft plastic inner sleeves that crumple like a prawn cracker in the outer sleeve, but do buy poly-lined paper inners, and seriously consider MoFi inners if you have the budget. Now, I was going to finish right here. That was going to be my inner sleeve video, and I was going to move on to other things. But I then received a new inner sleeve, and that needs to be taken into consideration. And as odd as it might sound, I am going to review that one inner sleeve next week. It's going to have its own video. And well, I tell you, it might well be that important for vinyl fans at any rate, of course. So hang fire on any final decisions you might want to make emanating from this video until you viewed part two of this mini series on inner sleeves next week. See you then. Oh, before you go, if you can click the like and if you haven't done so already, subscribe buttons downstairs. That will help this channel enormously. Please check out my links to my Patreon page, my Facebook group, and my website. Next time, well, next time will be Friday, won't it? And that's, that's part two of my entry into weirdness in terms of organizing my vinyl. And well, I hope you've seen part one already. If you haven't, check that out. Part two is to follow. And as I say, part two of this video, it's a mini-series all over, folks, will be appearing next Sunday. And then you can see part two of this inner sleeve investigation. I hope to see you then. Look forward to your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.